Greetings from the Masters Academy International. I'm grateful to come to you uh, and just give you a word of gratitude on behalf of your prayers and support for the ministry these days. We have a unique platform, having 17 training centers uh, in many countries overseas, teaching in as many as 70 different uh, locations through local churches. And we have heard many reports from our faculty and from students as to what God is doing through his people in these days. I want you to know that the work of TMA continues. Uh, I'm glad to announce that within 48 hours, uh, most of our schools having to shelter in place uh, or being limited by travel restrictions, we were able to transition to online courses. So all but two of our two schools today are actually using online platforms for delivering their courses. We actually believe we're gonna have the opportunity to provide more content and more resources to our pastors and church leaders uh, as a result of this. And so we're confident uh, that God is only going to continue to strengthen our own work uh, at this time. In addition to training our men to rightly divide the word of God, one of our key focus uh, as leaders is that we disciple our pastors and these church leaders. These are days where they're going to have to demonstrate with confidence uh, their convictions that God's word is sufficient. And so we want to come alongside them. We're creating uh, opportunities for online discipleship groups, following up with our alumni and graduates, just making sure that they feel supported and encouraged as they try to shepherd their congregations these days. These are days where we can encourage them from God's word, but we can also demonstrate his love to them in some really wonderful and unique ways. When we think about the opportunity before us, uh, where we train around the world, we recognize that the majority of people in their context have mostly been influenced by major world religions, which are false or false gospels like the prosperity gospel, cults, or even forms of animism and superstition. The fact of the matter is the anxieties and, and the fears that most people are facing today uh, will not have those concerns addressed by these false teachings. It's only the authority of God's word, rightly communicated, effectively conveyed, that can address those questions and those concerns. It is in times of crisis that people ask eternal questions. Questions such as, is there a God? If there is, does he love me? Does he care about me? If I were to die, what would happen to me after I die? And False teaching and false religions do not provide an answer that really satisfies the soul of man. The only thing that satisfies is the truth, and the truth is revealed to us in the Word of God. And so we're pleased that God's given us the privilege for many years to equip and train church leaders to rightly divide the Word of God. And these are days as they declare the truth and they help their congregations apply it to them they also understand that they hold the answers of life for those who are lost. I'm mindful in these days of 1 Peter chapter 2, where Peter reminds us that we are to declare the excellencies of God as we live before lost, as he says, Gentile people. He was writing to Christians who were scattered throughout the Roman Empire, living in different countries, different language contexts, and so forth, but they have one common mission and that was to glorify God with their lives. Even in the midst of fear, persecution, and suffering. And what he says to them, if they live their lives according to God's principles and govern their lives in holiness and obedience and reflect godly character, many will be drawn to know their Heavenly Father. And this is my confidence in these days. While it won't be reported in the secular media, We'll only hear theirs about the increasing number of victims of the virus or those who have died or the threats to first responders. We believe that there will be testimonies of how God is using his people to answer these eternal questions and see many come to faith in Christ. I look forward to the months and years ahead where we will be able to hear the large impact and effect of what God is doing through his church. But in the meantime, what we'd like to do is serve you and just encourage you, give you an alternative to just listening to the news and the media, is to present to you what we're calling Pictures of Hope. These are brief video clips filmed by our faculty or our students, and just highlighting the work of the ministry of their churches at this time. As you 
listen and, and watch these videos in the upcoming days, we trust that they'll be an encouragement to you, if you will, our gift to you, a perspective from around the world that puts its focus on what God is doing and who God is. So look forward to receiving these pictures of hope in the upcoming days. We trust they'll be a blessing to you. And again, I just want to say thank you for your support, your prayers, your encouragement that undergirds this global work, especially at this time. May the Lord bless you.